um, yeah, they would have completely wrecked his mineral line because he was unprepared, pretty much. That initial scout right there could have cost him the game. It, it is that simple. It, it could have cost him the game. Simply scouting gas can tell you a lot, whether they're going tech, whether they're going mass ling, or they're going to go for quick expansions, um, how long till the gas then after that, whether they're still going, whether they still haven't got no gas at 10 minutes, uh, they still haven't got no gas at, say, 8 minutes, they're still expanding, which means they're still going, they intend to go for heavy macro again. Um, if he hadn't scouted, it could have, he didn't scout, it could have gone a completely different way, but lucky he was, they, the Zerg didn't react, and the Zerg went for a very long macro game against the Protoss, which he honestly didn't really know what was going on. He had, his overall placement is terrible, as you can see from the minimap, he had one there. What's that going to show you? The mineral line? Okay. He should have had an overlord here, just off the map here, so he could come back in. So this is a tip to all the Zergs, if Zergs are watching, make sure you want, you want overlords around the outside of his base as well. So at point in times you can scoot in, scoot out with your overlord, just to see where they are, with where the Protoss are within their build. Um... Yeah, having the pro, uh, having so you can see where the products are pretty much, and that way you can react because he could build a lot more spines with the blink spines. Well, they would have done quite a bit really because he can come from here, which means he, he has to go through here. <coughs> I know he had the obs, but spines there would have saved him. He would have had to go all the way around. And spines there. So it's, if if does if the uh, Zerg had an overlord here and just whipped it in, whipped it out, he would have seen what was happening. He could he could have easily massed spines. But I have a feeling that Zerg was definitely counting on his creep spread to help him know what would happen. Um, but it didn't, as you can see, he didn't scout enough. Um, there are some other specific points. Um, he could have. He was, he could have skipped this altogether. He could have gone the double walk gate, Sunday's core, and the, uh, and the forge. He could have had a quick blink stalker, but he wouldn't have had the plus one upgrade. But, that he could have done with more confidence. I keep emphasizing the point where he didn't scout properly. If he had scouted properly, he could have delayed the forge, he could have got the quick warp, the quick blink, um, and then he could have gone for upgrades. And then from there on, he could have blinked. He could have uh, harassed with Blink, uh, just Blink in, Blink out, instead of just going for one big push. He could have Blinked in and Blinked out and poked, and the game might have been over earlier, to be honest. Especially with the... Uh, see, he would have come in through here, he could have Blinked up here, and just gone Blink, 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 into main base, wreck. <laughs> So he could have done that if he had scouted early and saw what the, how the Zerg was going, the direction he was going, so that would have been a lot more safer. And another thing is, if Zerg, this is not to do specifically with this game, but it is overall. If Zerg has an attack by 840, you can make the assumption that they are on three bases. It's a good assumption to make, it's a very strong assumption to make, because a two base Zerg all in is extremely rare. Two pace Zerg all in would come a lot earlier because of the, because of the minerals and then it would take the Zerg um, to create that two base all in. So assume at 840 that he's on most probably on three bases. It would it would be a fairly good assumption. Uh, they w it would have been a fairly good assumption to make. Um, uh, the the pros of this game. Sorry for the big pause. The pros of this game. He, he worked well using his uh, chrono. His chrono was ready, ready ever. Even now, it's not on 25. He's always chronoing something, whether it's these, uh, that. <coughs> He's chronoing for minerals or the warp gate, but he, he specifically chronoed, um, chronoed for his attack, which was a good idea. He chronoed, he chronoed for his add-ons. As I should put it, he chronoed for his add-ons, he chronoed for the blank, and he chronoed for the upgrades. 
Which is good, because he intended to all in, that was his intention, was an all in on the Zerg. Which he did. He all in, he had his, he had what he needed straight away. Which is, which is what he was doing. His early scout wasn't good, we already discussed this. Pylon near the geyser. This was really, really well. Also, this here, I didn't notice this before. This cannon placement. Lings come behind, try to get in, can't get into cannons, do, 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 do. warp him, Lings are gone. So if the Lings tried the back door, they would have made it in. And this here, stopped any early Ling harass. If they'd come in, they would have had to sit behind the mineral line, and they wouldn't have been able to come in without the cannon completely wrecking their crap. So that's another good thing. So definitely, if you're Protoss and you're against Zerg, always place a pylon between you guys who are in the wall. It will create, create, then it, create, it pretty much creates a uniform traffic way <laughs> for the lings. And they would definitely have to come this way around and into the base. With this cannon here, it, had, it, it would see pretty much everything within the mineral line. So they couldn't harass at all. He, he had really good saturation really quickly. Having that really good saturation really quickly allowed him to get this army that he needed and also the add ons he needed very, very quickly. It, 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 it gave him what he needed. Good, sa quick saturation is a very good thing. You shouldn't hold off on your drones to build something out. So always produce drones. Drones are your economy. You have you save drones to build something else. You're not going to have enough income to build something after what you intended to build by saving your drones. Always build drones. It gives you economy. Um, he had good micro. The blink was phenomenal. It, it was. He he blinked in, blinked up. The Zerg was unprepared. Um, his nine pylon placement, it was decent. I'll give him that. He was on twenty minerals though when he placed it, so he should have left, you know, about a second or a half earlier. He would have had perfect pylon placement. So that's something small to work on. And overall, he has good building placement. They are um, they are close together. They're close fit. It allows him to maneuver through the base. He doesn't have an artosis pylon either. Artosis pylon, it's not one pylon, you know, powering one, uh, powering like five buildings. He has at least three pylons. <coughs> he has at least two pylons to every group of building. This pylon, this one, 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 and this one. Same over here, this, 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 and then that one there, and then those there. So he has a very good pylon placement. Now the, the cons of this gameplay are obviously he didn't scout very quickly at all. He played blind way too long. Um, the the because he played blind. I'm not going to go on about it again. But the two gates, with the zealots, would have been better in my opinion. With the two zealots as well, especially from what he saw, the two zealots he could have easily secured this watchtower. And this watchtower. The watchtowers aren't there just in the game for the lols. They are there to help you. They are there to give you vision. Didn't occupy them at all throughout the game. Um, no watchtowers, no vision. What if they had been holding this one? You know, they would have seen you coming. They would have known. They would see you go this way. You know, uh, crawler, 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 crawler. <coughs> <coughs> he could have just spam crawlers. Blink stalk would have been pretty much done for. So he didn't, he should have actively held these pylons, uh, not pylons, watchtowers straight away. Um, also another thing, there are no hidden pylons, so I know he intended to go through an all in. If you're gonna all in, hidden pylons are good. Because then if the Xerxes are trying to all in, and they rush that army at your base, they destroy your base, you're still destroying theirs, they're like, oh no. It's not like Overlord comes with buildings. The overlords are supply. Then they supply at the end of the day. They aren't buildings, whereas your supply holder, which is your pylons, are also buildings. So if you hid a pylon around the map before you go all in, it forces the Zerg to not only kill your base but search the map for a pylon. While you, due to creep, you you can they can't place just buildings anywhere, which means that building all their buildings will be on creep. 
and creep's pretty easy to follow, which means you could, if it was a base v base, or uh, yeah, base v base, you would definitely win the uh, the overall base race. So that's definitely something sh you should do. Another thing which would have been good if you placed a pylon here at the third, the pylon wouldn't have also been a good. It would have been supply, it would have been hidden, but it's also a scouting pylon if you could call it that. It allows you to gain timings and if the enemy is expanding. If the enemy is expanding, you'll see it straight away. Also, supply box them for a little bit longer. <coughs> Sorry about the coffee. I don't know where it came from. Um, but yeah, the, the pylon would have also blocked him and it would have also scouted you. So definitely try and place a pylon at their third base. You'll lo The only thing is, if you do that, you have to definitely... Um, back it all with another pylon in base, so you'll probably, pretty much be doing double pylon placement, placing there, placing your base. So if that gets destroyed, you're still on the same amount of supply as you would have been. Um, that's pretty much it. It was a pretty straightforward game. He tried to, he intended to all in, but with this supply, he shouldn't have all in. <coughs> he should have expanded behind it. So if your mineral, if your macro isn't perfect, there's no point all in and because it defeats the purpose. He didn't scout properly he saw a 10 11 pool which you can hypothesize there'll be four links and roughly four and uh one thirty to two minutes including uh gap closing between the maps so assume two minutes that would have allowed him time to place um a gateway and get a couple of zealots out um also he didn't if he'd scouted the gas he would have definitely known this for sure um and it was an all in there's not so that's pretty much it guys definitely this this is a good build against Zerg, especially turning turtling Zerg, because you can pretty much just blink in, harass, blink out. You can stop them from doing what they intend to do, which is play a macro game. They have to force them to react, or their economy goes to bullshit, pretty much, because you're gonna blink in, take out some stuff, blink out, and they can't really. And also with blink stalker, it's easier to maneuver around the map and pick out lone overlords. <coughs> So it's a definitely a good build. Um, massing stalker first, and then getting war prism allows you to one hundred percent use your gas before you critically need your war prism. Um, you pretty much build your war prism when you have the spare gas or your intended timing. Um, and that is pretty much it. His upgrades were straight away. As I said, he, he waited too long to build the cannon, so it was pretty much useless building. So say for say about a minute and a half. A minute to a minute and a half. It was a useless building, which you don't want. If you're going to build it, if you're going to build a building, you want to be using it straight away. Or else it counts as wasted minerals. Like there's no point in having a building that you're not going to use. You know, it's just wasted minerals. But overall, a good gameplay, um, a good strategy. He utilized it as best as he could. As I mentioned, there's some of the things that he could have changed. <coughs> this is a coughing commentary. No idea why. Um, but that is, that is pretty much it. I'm gonna, this will be up <clears throat> in roughly three, four hours from doing this commentary actually. I'm gonna render it and I'm gonna upload it straight away. Tomorrow I'm gonna be doing another gameplay with the same guy. He sent me a bunch of replays, so I'm gonna be doing this again. It's gonna be PVT. I already wrote it out of the notes. What we're gonna do is gonna be in a call with me on Skype. So we're gonna go through. We're going to go through the game, he's going to explain what he wanted to do, his intentions, I'm going to ask him questions and raise points and say what could have been done, here, done better, what could have been done here. Maybe it'd be an easier way for everybody to learn, because then you could be thinking, oh, when you watch the commentary and you've done the same thing, you could be thinking, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay, so I should have done this instead, or done that, or I should carry on the track I am because what I thought the enemy was doing was completely on track. So, um, definitely, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, thank you for watching this. Sorry, it wasn't. It was short. Hopefully, it had some very key points for you. Um, I look. I have a word document, a notepad, and uh, with notes in. I'll copy and paste those notes into the um, about below. So all these notes will be with the video, so you can watch. So you can read the notes while watching. Um, so that is 